So a busy morning for us today. The girls are going over to Nana and Papa's and they're gonna sneak out for a ride. But before. Who said men can't multitask? Well, I was thinking, while I put the washing out, let's have a little talk about dressing for winter riding. Welcome to uh, winter in Sydney. Before I get too smug, um, it does get cold. Like it, the cold mornings you can get down, I'm gonna say three and four degrees, that's pretty rare. Like six to eight is kind of where we live. We're pretty lucky that it tends to be quite dry during winter. Now we've all got the sort of techniques and different bits of equipment that we rely on a lot through winter. Now let me start by saying I'm basing this on the temperature, the actual temperature, as opposed to the real feel. Now we all probably have the apps and bits and pieces on our phones that give us some sort of real feel thing. I don't tend to use that as my gauge. Slight condition there is if it's super windy, then I might go on the real feel. And also, it's a short ride, like an hour, then I might go on the real feel just because you don't tend to warm up as much. Okay, so starting, I reckon, let's, let's start around, this is gonna sound terrible to a lot of Europeans, but let's start around 20 to 13. So in that temperature, I'm gonna run a base layer. I'm gonna run a jersey, and then look, I might go arm warmers. In that bottom scale, I might start off with arm warmers. The thing with arm warmers, easy to chuck on and off. Now, I reckon from about 13 degrees on, assuming it's not gonna get, it, that's that region, that's where it starts to get really intricate. <laughs> With a temperature any less than 13, I tend to bring my gilet with me and I might go some a sock shoe cover type thing. 13 degrees, I'm probably going to start out with gloves. Now, we're not talking about the serious ski glove thing here. We're talking about some pretty windbreaker type things that just take the chill out of it. It's one of these temperatures where it's layering. It has got to be layering at that stage because a one, a one jacket solution is not going to work. Now, let's drop down to 10 degrees because 10 degrees, oh, this is where it all starts to happen. The similar top solution that I was talking about before, your base layer, jersey, gloves, arm warmers. But we're going to need to get a little bit of a leg solution happening. The knee warmer is a tough one aesthetically to get right. You know, obviously if you're just wearing your black bibs, then yeah, you can do your black leg warmer, your black knee warmers quite easily, but it can go wrong very quickly. Anytime you're running a bib which has got a little bit of design in it, you wanna be keeping your knee warm up pretty plain. Pretty sure I can do a Google search and find something of what I'm talking about. Now I said knee warmer, I didn't say leg warmer. <clears throat> I'm a big believer in knee warmers just because I find it doesn't tend to get cold enough for anything else. I know a lot of guys do run the full leg warmer with the zips that they can whip on and off. I kind of feel that if I'm if I'm leg warmering in any variety, it's on for the ride. Okay, gonna talk about it. The winter jersey or the winter jacket. I'm gonna caveat this by saying I've done through done. I've ridden through three winters in Sydney, never owned one. Never owned one. And have never been put off by a cold morning. Having said that, I do see the point of them. I think your cutoff is around eight degrees and less. Again, if you're on a long ride, not bothering, not bothering. Is for your shorter midweek probably ride, I can see the point to it where it's a, a 6 a.m. start and you just wanna stay warm. I'm talking about a winter jersey, not a winter jacket. So this is a solution, and I think for, for the riding we do, this is perfect. It's your base layer, it's your winter jersey, that's it. A winter jacket? We're in the Alps or in Dublin. I also wanna make a special mention to the aero jersey that we are running because it's the one piece material and it is that slightly deeper cloth that I was really surprised with during summer how well it performed. In winter, it's I haven't ridden my gilet yet, so I've just been going, so we've had some eight degree, nine degree mornings, base layer, the aero jersey and some arm warmers. And I'm thinking that's gonna get me through the majority of the winter in Sydney, especially if I'm gonna run some knee warmers as well. 
little additions that can make a nice difference. Peter Ritzky's, what do you want to call it? Schmug, smood, schnoosh, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, look, I'll admit, it's quite useful. Easy thing that can just whack on and off. Okay, two things I want to finish with. Obviously, I'm specifically talking about dry winters. Having lived through many wet winters in Dublin, it is a completely different wardrobe. When we moved back here and I brought all my cycling gear back, I haven't used any of it. You just don't use that type of stuff, that heavy, it's designed to keep you dry and warm. This is a dry, cold, crisp winter bit, I suppose. The other thing I wanna say, fitted stuff is your friend. You want stuff that is tight, to you, you do not want flapping around because the idea of this layering is that it's all quite close to your body and it's able to wick away. Winter stuff, even like your arm warmers and knee warmers, you want them tight to your body. Washing's out, work's done. Let's go right. Okay, train. Let's clarify something about the zone two stuff. I suppose what I wanted to stress from that was not so much the going out, riding a couple of hours of zone two, which is great. Realistically, many of us have time to do that. Case in point today, I'm going up north to do some 20 minute efforts. I want to keep the ride before and after the efforts to be as much quality as possible. So less surging. It's not going to be perfect by any stretch, mainly because I've got to ride through the city, lights, traffic, blah, blah, blah. To get some, I'm freewheeling now, so. That doesn't do much zone two, but once I get through the spit bridge, should be pretty good quality from there. You can judge. Nice day for it. This kit, guys, not many left. Get involved. Nothing you can do. Red lights. For me, I gotta go through the city, then through Mossman. So zone two is a bit of a pipe dream at this stage. If you want a definition into what is junk, have a look at the first 40 minutes of my ride. Traffic lights, pedestrians. When you're trying to be really consistent, the bit that people get wrong all the time is the downhills. Gotta keep pushing, keep the heart rate up. So the next bit's not zone two. Next bit's two, two 20 minute efforts at threshold. Kind of undulating out here in Akuna. Very undulating, quite a bit of downhill actually. So it's certainly not perfect for it, but I've got to do it somewhere. So much different to a constant climb. It's gonna do all about riding smooth. Got on board the junk train here with coil. That's pretty smooth. That was smooth. It was hard, but it was, it was hard, but smooth. 418 watts. 418 watts junk. Do you see the guys on the side of the road in the Giro with the toilet paper? <laughs> Howdy. Kind of set out wanting to make something there about riding smooth and that kind of stuff and then run into those guys when we chop off for a bit and that's the point. Like at the end of the day, you know, don't get too precious about these things. Your mates are going to try and beat you up your hill and you got to try and beat them too, you know? You know, it was much harder than an endurance level thing. And, and you know, I think that kind of adds to this whole point. I mean, if, you know, you join up with your mates and they want to go a bit harder, then just do it. Like, there's no big issue about that. Now, we've got a little bit of a surprise this evening. into the Vivid Festival in Sydney. Seriously, how cool is this? So when the uh, lit up, actually in its current form, Kira says, oh, rainbow, rainbow. Very cute. Speaking of which, where are they? Yeah. 